students. We're going to be talking about a lot today in this concept three. We're going to talk about the cell cycle in cancer, stem cells, and some regulation. So let's get to it. To give you some context for what we're talking about, how does this happen? How do we go from this to this to this? You know, that's crazy. I mean, that's a miracle when you look at these pictures. So we're going to be talking about how this goes down. It all begins with a fertilized egg. So once the sperm meets the egg and becomes fertilized, we call that fertilized egg a zygote. That zygote goes through cell division repeatedly. So it's copying itself over and over and over again, making a bunch of identical cells. It's just a clump. You're just a clump of identical cells at first until differentiation happens. And that's the process that creates special structures and functions. So certain cells become brain cells or skin cells or hair cells. They become differentiated. And these special cells become tissues. Those tissues work together to be organs and those organs work together in organ systems. So remember an organism is just one individual member of a species, one living thing. But an organism has several organ systems which are distinct sets of organs within the organism that work together for a common function like your digestive system, so your intestines and your stomach, and other organs that work together to help you digest food and get energy from it. Organs are several types of tissues that work together for a common function, so your stomach has several different tissues in it that work together to make it function as a stomach. Tissues are groups of identical cells working together for a common function, so like muscle tissue is a bunch of muscle cells working together. And then we know the cell is the most basic unit of life has all the characteristics of life um, that we'll talk about in our later ecology unit. And an example is a muscle cell. So this is kind of what's going on. We're, we're taking one cell, you start off as one cell, we're replicating it continuously, doubling it, dividing it, so that we have all these identical cells and then we're differentiating them into these different things to make up an organism. Cell differentiation is irreversible. So once you become a heart cell, you are a heart cell forever and ever and ever. But some cells are stem cells. And these are cells that have not been differentiated yet. They're undifferentiated. So they still can become one or more types of specialized cells. And there's two types. Embryonic stem cells are what all cells start as. They're never before differentiated. Adult stem cells are cells that you find in your adult bone marrow. Um, but they've been partially differentiated. So we can't make them whatever we want. We can only make them bone, blood, cartilage, fat, or connective tissue, but we can still differentiate them some. And we're going to talk a lot more about stem cells. We're going to do a little research about them, um, but that's going to be separate from our notes. So we're going to keep moving on with our notes, and now we're going to talk about the cell cycle. So when we say they're making identical copies of themselves, these cells, they're going. They're doing that by doing this thing called the cell cycle. So it's a repeated pattern of growth of DNA duplication and cell division, and this is occurring in eukaryotic cells. So plants, animals, humans, fungus, protists, that's what we're talking about here. The purpose is for growing and repairing, and there's three main phases, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. So we're going to start with interphase. This is the growth phase has three subphases, G1 or GAP1, and the cells growing and making proteins, S or synthesis, which is when the chromosomes are replicating. This is so important because if the chromosomes don't double or replicate themselves, and when the cell divides, the resulting cells would have half the number of chromosomes. And that's not good because your chromosomes are your DNA, and your DNA runs your cell. So all your cells need all of the, your DNA. And so the S phase happens so that we can double the DNA so that when they divide, every cell gets the amount that it needs. And then last but not least is G2 or GAP2. This is the cells continuing to grow and make proteins. And organelles are duplicating also. In this picture of the cell, we're really simplifying it. We, we eliminated all of the organelles, but please know that the organelles are still there. They're still a Golgi, they're still an ER, all that jazz. But we're only including in our pictures the organelles that affect that are critical for cell division, which is the nucleus with the DNA in the middle and the centrioles. So that's what you're going to see, but do know the other organelles are in here. And at the end of interphase, we should have a cell with two full sets of chromosomes. 
That's what we should end up with, so that when the cell divides, each cell has the set of chromosomes that it needs. Let's talk about the DNA for a second. We've talked about DNA a little bit, but let's just emphasize, chromosomes are one long continuous thread of DNA. They have numerous genes on them with all of your regulatory information. As a human, your body cells have 46 chromosomes in them. And in normal body cells, your chromosomes occur in pairs. So you actually really have 23 pairs. 23 individual chromosomes you got from your mom and 23 that you got from your dad, giving you the 46 total chromosomes that you need. And each chromosome could have thousands of genes on it. All right, some DNA vocabulary. This is showing a duplicated chromosome. So this is after the S phase of interphase. So a chromatid would just be one of these halves um, of the duplicated chromosomes. When we're talking about both of them, we're referring to the sister chromatid, so the two identical copies of the same chromosome. The centromere is the region in the middle. It looks kind of condensed. We move these chromosomes or these sister chromatids around by the centromere. And then the telomere are the ends of the DNA molecules. Okay, so after the cell's been prepared to divide and interface, it's ready to actually do the division part. And that's mitosis, which is the cell division. One cell is becoming two identical daughter cells. We're going to go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis in mitosis. Now, we also see right here, this is called prometaphase. Some people include it as a separate, distinct step. Others just say it kind of flows in between. We're not going to go through it. It's just kind of an intermediate step between these two. But we are going to go through each of these. So prophase. Chromosomes condense. They become visible as sister chromatids, or they look like Xs. Um, normally, they look kind of like that spaghetti I showed in the previous picture, or chromatin. They look thread-like. When they condense, they look like little rods. The nuclear membrane disappears, so we're showing it dissolving here with that dotted line. And spindle fibers start growing or forming out of the centrioles. This is what's going to move the chromosomes around, so those start to form. Metaphase, the spindle fibers connect to the centromeres and they, of each sister chromatid, and they line them up in the middle of the cell, single file. Anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. So we pull them apart to either end of the cell or to opposite poles on either end of the cell. In telophase, okay, the nuclear envelope or membrane starts reforming around the chromosomes. We're forming two nuclei because there's going to be two different cells. Chromosomes start to look like chromatin again, so you don't see that in this picture, but they would start to decondense and look thread-like again rather than rod-like. And these spindle fibers start dissolving and breaking down because we don't need them anymore. And cytokinesis begins in telophase. And that's the division of the cytoplasm in between two cells. In plant cells, something called a cell plate forms halfway between the nuclei, and it gradually um, splits the cells into two separate pieces. Animal cells, we form a cleavage furrow, so it kind of pinches in the middle until they separate into the two cells. Either way, the end result is two identical body cells with the exact same amount of DNA as the original cell. So in humans, we start with 46 chromosomes, we end with two cells with 46 chromosomes in them. So how often does this even happen? It kind of happens at different rates depending on the cell and the needs that that cell has. So for example, the internal lining of your intestines divides every five days. Um, skin cells divide every two weeks. Red blood cells are every four months, which is why you can only give blood once every four months because it has to be able to regenerate. And your liver cells actually only divide once a year. Now, sometimes people ask, why do cells divide? Well, we said earlier, they divide for growth and repair reasons. But they don't just get bigger. You know, sometimes people think, if we're growing, why wouldn't our cells just be bigger? Why would we have trillions of cells when we could just have, like, 300 large cells? Well, surface area is really the answer to it. We want smaller cells so they have more surface area because the more surface area is, the more cell membrane there is, which gives us more room for things to move in and out of the cell, which is really important for maintaining homeostasis. And so that's why we divide cells and make copies of them rather than just having them get bigger. All right, the last thing we want to talk about is regulation of the cell cycle, and this is super important to know how do cells know when to divide and when not to divide um, because if this goes wrong, we can get cancer. So, the cell cycle is controlled by a chemical control system. It starts and it stops events in the cell cycle. 
It can be regulated externally or internally. External regulation is a signal coming from outside the cell. So a hormone in your body or food that you're eating signals your cell that it needs to divide. Or even just chemicals in your body signal that it needs to divide. Internal regulation is a signal from within the nucleus. So the DNA of the cell is telling it that it's time for it to divide. So there's these different checkpoints. It's kind of like um, that red light, green light game you'd play in elementary school. So they tell the cell when to stop dividing and when to start dividing. So red light, green light in order to regulate how often division occurs. In general, most of a cell's life is spent in the red light or the off position unless there's some sort of stimulus that's saying, hey, you need to start dividing now. Something really cool um, in terms of cell regulation that exists is apoptosis. And this is programmed cell death. This is actually a part of regulation where your cells tell themselves to commit self-suicide. So some signals activate genes that cause your cell to produce self-destructive enzymes, which then break down the cell, causes the nucleus to shrink and break apart. And this is a great thing in terms of, you know, making sure that this doesn't happen, you know, so you don't have webbed toes or fingers. Um, also, this is a way of, if your cell notices a malfunction, it can try to kill the cell before it makes copies of themselves, which is pretty cool. Now, when this gets messed up, we get cancer, which is uncontrolled cell division. This is when that regulation of the cell cycle, the chemical control system, breaks down. And cancer cells divide much more often than healthy cells. And because of that, they lead to the formation of tumors, which are clumps or clusters of cells that are just dividing uncontrollably. We say tumors can be malignant or benign. Malignant tumors are cancer cells that have broken away from the original tumor and they're carried to other parts of the body or other organs and start forming additional tumors. So when they spread, we say that they have metastasized, which is the spreading from one organism to organ to others. Um, so this is really bad. You know, this is meaning you have cancer in multiple parts of your body. A benign tumor is just abnormal cancer cells, but they're clustered together. They haven't spread. Sometimes they can be even harmless, you know, and we can remove them really easily. Um, but sometimes they can be like this brain tumor, which even though it's benign and it hasn't spread, it's still very large and it would be really hard to remove in a really serious surgery. Now there's several causes for cancer. Often it's a result of exposure to carcinogens, which we say are cancer causing agents. They're chemicals that cause cancer. They cause, you know, DNA mutations. UV rays, so from the sun or tobacco smoke or x-ray exposure can all be considered carcinogens. They mutate your DNA so it doesn't send the right signals and regulation isn't regulated correctly. Other random mutations can cause it. Even infectious agents, so viruses can cause cancer. HPV is the human papillomavirus. It causes cervical cancer in women. So that's just another thing that can cause this crazy, uncontrolled cell division. And that's the cell cycle in cancer.